Good evening and welcome to the June 18th Planning Board meeting. Nancy, please take roll. Commissioner Suarez. Present. Commissioner Carpenter. Present. Commissioner Wilson. Present. Chair. Present. On this meeting, uh, this evening's agenda, we have the approval of meeting minutes, a couple of them. Uh, 20 Marbledale Road, which is an amended site plan uh, uh, to expand business. Uh, 108 Sagamore Road. It's a new retaining wall and 220, 225 Marbledale Road parking lot replacement in new retaining wall and 170 Marbledale Road amended site plan approval. So at this point, I'd like to have to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of June 20th. Can I have a second? Second. 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 Okay. Um, Nancy, take roll. Okay, yes, Commissioner Suarez. Present. No, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Just yes. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Abstain. Yes. Okay, and then I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of December 19th. I have a second. 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 Okay, so uh, Nancy, please take roll. Uh, yes, Commissioner Suarez. Yes. Commissioner Abstain. And Commissioner Wilson. Yes, approved. Yes, approved. Okay, so we get those two out of the way. At this point, can we have 20 Marbledale Road come up and present? Drawing if you need, or? Yeah, yeah, if you, if you could use the uh, easel, I'd appreciate it. it Commissioner and members of the board, I'm Leonard Brandis, the architect for Elcan Industries. I'm here with my assistant uh, Rory Bieber and with Russ Grotto uh, representing Elcan Industries. Uh, we're here to go for a modification for our original approval that we had about 12 years ago, where we had a uh, maximum of 12 to 13 employees that was approved. Uh, right now, we are running about 20 employees and we are expecting to be expanded in the next five years to about 30 employees on site working there. Uh, the issue that we have is that we only have 10 legitimate parking spaces within our lot, along with the loading dock, so we want to make sure the loading dock's clear so trucks can come in. And so we do have parking on the streets. We did go before the other boards where we did get approval uh, to accept this and sent this to you guys for a final approval if possible. Uh, Trucking-wise, I know there's been discussion we just had in terms of the hours where we are not going to have any truck deliveries coming in between 7.30 now, 7.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning. And that trucking deliveries will stop after 4 p.m. No. When this store base closes. No, I, I think we're agreeing to a... Uh, two, to four. two to four, I think it is. That's when the school buses are making their rounds. So we're right, That's why we went to 7.30. We originally, we have a... No, no, we're talking about the afternoon drop-off. Afternoon drop-off? Yeah, so buses pick up in the morning, then in the evening they bring them back. So we're concerned about the afternoon drop-off, which is typically anywhere between two, 2 to 4. We haven't really been having issues at that 2 to 4, at least that we are aware of. We've, we've never had any problems with that. I mean, it's not a residential block necessarily. No, it's a commercial block. There's residences right. that, you know, that they access to that location. Um, I, I've witnessed ones in the morning. I'm at work in the afternoon, so I don't see them, but I'm sure if they occur in the morning, they also occur in the afternoon. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's some reservations about the, uh, uh, you know, that those trucks will block traffic, and they have blocked traffic. You know, I, I've witnessed it multiple times, and it takes, depending upon a driver and his skill set, it takes quite a while to get to maneuver the truck into your parking lot. Wow. So that wasn't brought to my attention previously uh, about the 2 o'clock. We did have the morning issues, which we have discussed with the police department, where they have actually had approved to us. Uh, we've had an agreement with them for a while now, from 8 to 10, not to have any deliveries. Uh, we haven't had any issues that we've been told about in the afternoon. So, you know, we still need to run a business there. We can't just stop business. We, you know, we what, are, what time do you guys close? 4 o'clock. How long does it take to load up a 55-foot truck? 
That's, that's what I'm saying. So it's, uh, you know, if you close at four and you back up an hour and a half, right, you're, you're literally, uh, you, you really, uh, the, the uh, what? So you can't start, in, uh, well, it takes, so the latest you could do it is at 2.30, right? So in other words, if the, if the truck comes at 2.30, you got an hour and a half to load them and get them out of there, right? Yeah, so what I'm saying is, you know, you need to end at 2.30 so that, you know, we can have uh, traffic move uh, swiftly on Marbledale Road and Main Street. I mean, trucks coming in, but they would take that hour and a half, and they'd be leaving at 4. No, but I'm just saying, it, and yes, but... but uh, right, it, uh, that's, that, I, I can understand that happening. That, that would be reasonable, but it's, once again, it's still, they're leaving, they're still leaving our premises at 4 o'clock. I know kids are getting out of school between uh, uh, two thirty and they're going home. So you know, if your truck is there, you know, uh, trying to get into your into your driveway and the buses are coming in, it, it gets very uh, uh, challenging at that area. And again, I've witnessed it in the morning, not in the afternoon. To your point, but again, I'm I'm working. I'm not you know patrolling Marbledale Road. Uh, so, you had any issues that you've not seen? In the afternoon. We've never, never seen, seen it. it. It's the public works. But it has nothing to do with public works. I mean, public works parks their trucks along, you know, Marbledale, and I, I you know, uh, that's what they typically do. So that makes it even more challenging because those, those vehicles are there. So what the proposal here would be is that they're in by 2:30. So essentially, between 2:30 and 4, there's no traffic going back and forth. So they have to be in by 2:30 so they can unload and do whatever. And after 4, or if they're out at 4, that's fine. But between 2:30 and 4, they would. There would essentially really be traffic with the buses. The, cha our, the, the, the challenge, the challenge is from ten o'clock. So you're giving us a four and a half hour workday. It's really not a business. We can't, you know, I can't guarantee that truck's going to be there if he gets stuck in traffic. You know, they are going to get to us before four o'clock, obviously, because they want to get it. You know, they want to be able to get out before we close. But I think it's going to be very difficult to guarantee in the middle of the day that there's going to be a problem. It's mostly the problems that we've had in the past was in the morning because people are also rushing to get to the train in the morning. That's a lot of, you know, it's not so much the bus traffic as much as, you know, personal vehicles traveling down there to get to the train in the morning. That's why we stopped, that's why we stopped the deliveries in the morning. That was the main issue that we've had. Uh, we haven't had any issues in the afternoon. There's never been, we've never had any complaints about the afternoon. I get it. Like I said, we do have to run a business. I, I totally understand, but to, to Mr. Suarez's uh, point, I mean, if you can get your truck inside the, your facility by 2.30, it gives you an hour and a half to, to load it up, and the truck leaves, and uh, you guys go home. The issue is, I, th I think the most challenging is getting the truck within your loading dock area. Getting out, I don't think that is an issue. The guy can maneuver fairly quickly. Well, listen, we're giving you parameters. Um, we, we gave you parameters when, we f when you first uh, uh, took over the building. You know, uh, I believe we also set timing uh, and sizes of trucks that were allowed on your premises. And I think, you know, the, uh, if I recall correctly, we were, we, we were discussing box trucks, and now we got trailers going in there. So, um, you know, modifications, you know, you guys made modifications to the resolutions that we approved back in, you know, 10 years ago. Can we load trucks after four and all the people stay late? Can we load trucks after four and all have to pay overtime to people to stay late? But I mean, yeah, as long as, you know, as long as you're out, I mean, if school is typically. Mr. Chair, why don't we, uh, Mr. Seminar had a good idea. Um, leave the afternoon at the discretion of the uh, chief, chief of police. Okay. And what he'll do is monitor that, and if it becomes a problem, then he can limit it to whatever he, he feels it needs to be limited to. You don't think so we need, we need we'll to set the, the morning parameters, and then the afternoon we'll leave in the discretion of the chief. If you're okay with that. If you guys are okay with that. So the school bus usually, uh, what t the school ends about 2.30? Yeah. 2.30, 2 right? So pick up, and then what, half hour to, uh, uh, to start so making I rounds? Don't believe so the the problem is that Rogers Street, which is the residential street, right. so they come down Winter Hill, they make the right on the Marbledale Road, they make the left on the Rogers, and they do that whole area back there. They they did to do that loop, and typically they pull out back on Marbledale and go home. So that transition of that time period is really what we're trying to. No, and Rogers Street is very close to you know a block, not same same next. Yeah, block. it's right in that corner, right. And there's a lot of, you know, that's a whole bit bus. Yes. Path. So that's the problem. It picks up Rogers, it picks up Columbus Avenue, and goes loops back. So it's a lot of kids. So it's not, it's, I think, one or two bus loops. 
I don't, you know, if the chief, it's up to you guys. If the, if the chief doesn't see a problem with it or we don't have a problem, I don't have a problem with it either. The problem is if it, it becomes a problem, what do we do? Send them back to the site plan approval again? It's a problem. But the thing, uh, yeah. That's what makes sense to have it. Yeah, I, I agree. Have to make it down, because, yeah. And then it can be modified by the chief. Yeah, correct. That was my thought. Okay. Yeah, so I, we need to, I think we need to have a baseline and then the chief can monitor it, right? Because we did have a baseline and we've had issues as a result of, you know, uh, even even with the baselines in place, uh, up to you guys. We've we've had issues. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was just a suggestion. I don't know. No, no, I, no. I, 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 which which is fine. I, I mean, I said the issues we've had that we've been you know that have been identified as were always morning issues, not uh, afternoon issues. But if there are, and as Mike is saying, there's only a couple of buses that we're dealing with. We're not dealing with a large amount of buses going back and forth. I, I agree with that. So if we, I, can, I, if we can have it with the police chief monitoring, we certainly, we've had agreements with them in the past, we certainly would work with whatever they need. And that's, that we obviously, so we're trying to be a good neighbor always. You know, they've always been a good neighbor to this town. They're doing the best they can. So if we Anybody can work it so it works with this? the police Anybody? chief on their approvals. Well, I agree with keeping the time, but letting it be monitored by the chief of police. What time do you do, what do you think? Because um, right now I think we're proposing 2.30 to 4.00. Any opinions? I think it's okay to keep that time that we're proposing, the 2.30 to 4. Right. But of course, with some flexibility where if the if the, tr the truck shows up at 3, you know, we might be, you know, we can proceed uh, as necessary, but occasional monitoring by the police, and that would help as well. Uh, so it's, it's not set in stone that it has to be 2.30 or 4, but we just have those parameters there uh, as a baseline, like uh, the commissioner said, or the chair said. A long time for a truck to back in. A long time for a truck to back in is usually three minutes. Anyway, so it's a three-minute thing that's then costing us an hour and a half. Basically. Right. So within reason, it shouldn't really matter if it's only going to be three minutes. It, you know, you should be able to do what you need to do. It, the timing shouldn't. But if I can't back it in during that hour and a half, it costs us an hour and a half. Well, again, going back to the math, right? I mean, realistically, you close at 4. It takes you an hour and a half to load the truck, right? The truck has to be there by 2.30 in order for you for everything to work properly, correct? Is the math right? Yes. Is math correct, right? So we're saying, you know, a guy shows up at 2:30, parks his vehicle, shows up at 2:45, gets to park his vehicle. Not not an issue. Uh, if you if he shows up at four, for argument's sake, you're paying overtime regardless, right? right? So I mean, I'm not sure why we're still arguing over this. I mean, if you have some flexibility, I think everyone's open to a little bit of flexibility, you know. But again, it also depends on the experience of the driver, right? That's, uh, yeah. You've had drivers that take. We, we deal with it all the time. Where and again, they don't even know how, we don't know how they got a license. Exactly. And I've, I've been witness to one of those instances where I sat there on Rogers Street and, you know, took photographs and complained yeah. to him. Yeah, it's not, it's not <laughs> fun. Obviously, they're not our licensed drivers. Our guys are trained to help them back in. I, I got and it. And everything else. We'll do the best. And, and, I, I, and that's, and I, and again, I, that's why I feel at this point comfortable leaving at 2.30. I don't think, it, uh, and unless it becomes an issue, I'm sure someone will enforce it. But... Uh, I think at this point, I, we, I think we all feel comfortable leaving it at 2.30 or 4. If it becomes an issue, you know, we'll revisit it. If it doesn't become an issue... You just have to be mindful that there are buses and, every, you know what I mean? Like, it's, everybody has to get about, through. talking uh, about two buses that are passing through. Exactly. There for an hour and a half of time of where we... Uh, we well, by the same token, this doesn't, say, this doesn't change your, your operations very much because either way, if, as the chair said, if you want to be out of there by 4, they have to be there by 2.30, correct? So this does, it's not an impediment yeah, on you guys. Truck comes and just has a delivery that's going to take a half hour. You know, it's that, we don't always Your deliveries are typically done in the morning, from what I recall. Is that, is that not true? It's out of our control. Yeah, you know, but whatever. Day, I mean, yeah. But again, this is, so we have it there as a baseline. This isn't a hard and fast rule where someone's going to be there and say at 2.30, this can't be done anymore. You guys have to close down. We have it there as a baseline. We want to basically just get a temperature for it, see how it's going to proceed. If we see that it's constantly happening where between 2.30 and 4, there are, there's movement going on and there's traffic, then at that point, we'd revisit the conversation and things might change. But we just want it there as a baseline to just say, hey, look, try your best not to do anything during these hours. But if one day you have to be flexible and allow for a delivery or for someone to load up, what have you, so be it. But that's what we're saying, that the police chief will monitor it just to, to see how things are proceeding. 
And it's also uh, just uh, it's also uh, th that corner is a very busy corner. I mean that park is being utilized on a regular basis. I mean th there's kids after school, and now that summer's coming, they're going to be there all afternoon, morning. You know and that park is heavily used. Cars park along Marbledale, and uh, uh, it's not like you're going to have uh, uh, empty uh, parking spaces as well. I mean those guys, those kids are there from you know the morning to ten o'clock in the evening. So. There's a, there's a lot going on in your little corner. Um, so again, w this is what we feel comfortable with. Uh, let, me, l let us know what you want to do. Can I ask a question? Is sure. Buses the next three months over the summer or no? I'm sorry? sorry? Buses the next three months over the summer? No. No. So can we have that restriction removed <coughs> during the summer months, during off school? As part of it, See, you're restricting us from having running a business. It's it's difficult. But during during the summer months, you wouldn't affect the busing. It wouldn't affect the busing. That's right. what I'm saying. So, so but then that, that would at least add that into it. I, I don't think that they're restricting you. For, and tell me if I'm wrong. What they're saying to you is between two thirty and four. If it's if if the police chief doesn't call us and say it's a problem, then it's not a problem. If he calls the building department and says it's a problem, then we'll have to cite you to say go back to the board or we, you have to stay within the parameters. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So they're not telling you you can't do it unless it becomes a problem. So if the chief sees that it's becoming a problem, he's going to send us an email to the building department and say, hey, you're blocking the buses at 245. They need to be restricted. Then we would come see you guys. Guys, you got to stay within the parameter of 230 to 4, or we need to go back to the planning board. I think right. that's the way I'm seeing it. Correct, guys? You're correct. Okay. Thank so Gary, can it be put into that's what he's going to put writing in. that way? That's, that's all I would request. And then once again, that we can get the summer months off that it's not restricting in, during the summer months. So leaving it as is, uh, I mean, at this point, I mean, we need to move on. Is this okay or not? Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, any questions uh, from the board? Good. Uh, at this point, I make a motion to open a public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone here this evening to speak on this application? Since there's no one here to speak on this application, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Planning board resolution decision applicant owner Elcan Industries Incorporated location of project 181 Main Street also known as 20 Marbledale Road in Tuckahoe section 68 block 4 lot 50 E description of project amend existing site plan. The following is the resolution decision of the planning board of the village of Tuckahoe New York. Applicant has an approved site plan for its business located at 181 Main Street, also known as 20 Marbledale Road, in Tuckahoe. Applicant's business has expanded over the past several years, and the applicant is looking to legalize the expanded business. Applicant is looking for a maximum of 30 employees and has limited on-site parking. Applicant has been utilizing the ample metered street parking. We find that this situation is acceptable. We also find that the proposed layout of the parking lot is acceptable. We find, based on the work sessions and presentations at the public hearing, that the applicant has met its burden as to Section 7.1 of the Village of Tuckahoe Zoning Code, and therefore the application is approved based on the following conditions. 1. Truck deliveries to the business shall not take place between the hours of 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Monday through Friday and 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. 2. There shall be no outside storage. Every representation of the applicant made in its application and presentation will be a condition of this approval. Any deviation from the representations made shall be cause for the revocation of said approval. Meeting date June 18th, 2024. Can I have a second, please? Second. Nancy, take roll. Commissioner Suarez. In favor. Commissioner Carpenter. In favor. Commissioner Wilson. In favor. Chair. In favor. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, can, do we have uh, 108 Sagamore? Good evening. Speak into the microphone. Identify yourself, your address, and the project you're, you're My representing. Name is Peter Landy. I'm the contractor for 108 Sagamore Road. Right. For the construction of the retaining wall. Okay. Um, Guys, got any questions? 
Yes. So we sent your the documentation you presented us a, a couple of months ago to our consultants, and our consultants, I guess, came back and said everything was great. The only thing we, we're looking for uh, uh, from you is what is the what does the wall look like? In other words, what is the material that's on the wall itself? The wall. Do you have any images of? Uh, the finished product is going to be just straight concrete, but straight concrete. We had a work session last two weeks ago. Yeah. And between one of the people that were at the work session plus Bill Williams suggested possibly putting uh, colorized stucco on the finish of the wall. Okay. If that would be acceptable. Do you have you have you guys selected a color that you want to utilize? Bill Williams, according to you guys, we're going to pick it out. <laughs> we're going to pick it out? <laughs> Typically, you come with a, with a proposal, and then we'll say, oh, it looks great, or whatever. You know, we don't live there. At the end of the day, it's uh, uh, I mean, it has to be probably a cream color, because the building is a brownish cream. OK, hold on. Let's see if I can see. It's an interior, right? It's an interior wall, right, if I recall correctly? No, it's an exterior. It, it, on the left side. But, you, but it's set back. OK, let's see what it looks like. Give me a second. If you go slow enough. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's it's like set back under a. Uh, I don't know if you call it an awning, concrete awning. Excuse me. Can you, can you show me where the wall is going to be? I, I mean, yeah, it's on the left. Huh? This wall back here? Yeah. Yeah. Is it back here? Oh, shoot, I just lost it. Hold on, sorry. Just lost it. Is it back here? The wall? Where's the That's wall? Right there. This is the wall going to be the wall right here? So currently it looks like it's a beige product. So oh yeah, probably a good idea to do a beige. Mm -hmm. You wanna us to pick a color for you? I got some. Yeah. Beige is it? Wanna pick a color? Sure. Exterior decorators. Here's the thing. Oh. Yeah, let me see that book. These right. do not look at these. This I won't look at those. All right. Just All right. these? All right. Go ahead. Mm. To the white, linen, sand. Not too stony. Oh, thank you. I mean, it's pretty light to begin with, right? Those colors are more colorful. If you want to see it, Henry, it's over there. I guess the question: Which most closely resembles the building? Yeah, that one. Well, Billy's two-tone, basically. Mm. Which one do you like? All right, sand dollar. Sand dollar, you okay? All right, cool. All right, so sand dollar is the winner. I'm going to put an X next to it. Is that all right? Great. All right. Easy. Okay. Yeah, when we get to it. Um, okay. Um, any questions from the board? No. no. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to open the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone here to speak on this application? Since there's no one here to speak on this application, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Planning Board Resolution Decision. Applicant Owner. Uh, location of Project 108 Sagamore Road, Tuckahoe. Section 27, Block 7, Lot 1. Description of Project. Structural work to an existing retaining wall. CEQA resolution. Pursuant to the regulations of the of CEQA, this board finds that the action taken herein is an unlisted action subject to the requirements of this of CEQA and its implementing regulations. This board is in possession of all information reasonably necessary to make the determination as to the environmental significance of the proposed site plan application. That that the action taken herein shall ha not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and it is declared that a negative declaration is hereby adopted with regard to this action. I make a second. Nancy, take roll, please. Um, Commissioner Florence. In favor. Commissioner Parker. In favor. Commissioner Wolf. In favor. In favor. Second. 
The following is the resolution decision of the Planning Board of the Village of Tuckahoe, New York. Applicant is seeking to repair an existing retaining wall at the property located at 108 Sagamore Road, Tuckahoe. This board has referred this application to the village's engineer and our engineer has no objection as to the proposed plans. We find based on the work sessions and presentations at the public hearing that the applicant has met its burden as to section 7-1 of the village of Tuckahoe zoning code and therefore the application is approved based on the following condition. Applicant shall use the finish on the wall as presented at the public hearing. I, that was sand dollar, right? Mm -hmm. The number? Yes, son, sand dollar. What was the number? 8036. Thank you. Let the record show. Sand dollar? 8036. Every representation of the applicant made in its application and presentation will be a condition of this approval. Any deviation from the representations made shall be cause for the revocation of said approval. Meeting date June 18, 2024. I second. Nancy, can you have a okay, take roll? In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. Thank you very much and good luck. Now you can finally build. Thank you. I'll right. be very happy. <laughs> okay. Enjoy your summer. All right, at this point, can we have 225 Marbledale? How are you? Evening. For the record, my name is Allison Fausner. I'm an associate attorney with the law firm Cuddy and Fader, appearing on behalf of Verizon. Uh, with me tonight is our project engineer as well as our project manager from Verizon. Uh, this is relative to the Verizon facility located at 225 Marbledale. It's been a little while, but we were last before you in November and December, at which time we gave you a comprehensive presentation. I'm not sure if the board wants us to go through everything or just give you updates since we were last before you. If you don't mind, just a uh, just quick uh, presentation, not nothing extensive, so just uh, sure. so so that everyone at home can uh, okay. uh, just see exactly what uh, we're proposing, rather than going trying to go back six months, seven months, try to find. Uh, the I'll meeting. give you a couple sentence overview, and then I will defer to our project Fine. engineer on yeah. specifics. Uh, but at its core, this proposal is relative to mitigating existing conditions on the property. So we're dealing with a lot of flooding. So we're proposing uh, various stormwater management techniques and facilities on the property. It's also intended to stabilize a lot of the um, shifts in topography that we're dealing, especially with the multifamily residents to the adjacent area. So we have some retaining walls as well throughout the site. Uh, but Yuri, if I can defer to you just to talk more specifics about the uh, stormwater management program. Good evening. My name is Yuri Tupachuk, uh, Key Civil Engineering. So for stormwater, uh, we, are, we have uh, an existing pump uh, there's a catch basin that captures the water, and there's only one catch basin for the entire parking lot that drains into a pump, and that pump discharges uh, to a sewer uh, in the street. We are proposing uh, a few more catch basins to capture all the water, and that those catch basins will take the water into an underground uh, detention system, and it will release at a slower rate so the pumps can catch up and get the water out of the uh, site and into the sewer. Mm -hmm. okay. That will prevent the flooding in here. Okay, and so, uh, Mr. Seminara, the, our consultant has reviewed the design, made comments, and it's all approved at this point? Correct. They made some changes and they went back and forth. I think we're all set. To okay, great. Thank you. With that brief overview. So since we were last before, we did get sign-off letters from your outside consultants. We also revised the plans to include privacy fencing along the rear and right. side lot lines. That's what the board requested at the yes. December meeting. Uh, we also got a copy of the county comments, and that relates to management of those stormwater facilities. Verizon's completely amenable to providing a maintenance program to the building department for their review and sign off. It'll just detail what we're doing on a regular basis to make sure that you know none of those facilities are gonna be overflowing. Okay. And that's right. about it. All right. Anyone from the board have any questions on this applicant? Not at this moment. At this point, okay. So uh, at this point, I, may, I make a motion to open, open the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is anyone here to speak on this application? At this point, I make a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Can I have a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So at this point, uh, you want to read this one? Okay. 
<laughs> Village of Tuckahoe, Planning Board Resolution. Applicant owner is Verizon Global, Global Real Estate. Location on the project is 225 Marbledale Road, Tuckahoe, New York. Section 39, Block 4, Lot 1D. Description of project, improvements to the property, including underground drainage, pay, uh, pave the parking lot, on-site sidewalk replacement, and replacement of existing retaining walls. Secret resolution. Pursuant to regulations of secret, this board finds that the action taken herein is an unlisted action subject to the requirements of SECRA and its implementing regulations. Two, this board is in possession of all information ne uh, reasonably necessary to make the determination as to the environmental significance of the proposed site plan application. The act number three, the action uh, taken herein shall not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and, is, it, and it is declared that a negative declaration is hereby adopted with regards to this action. Can I have a second, please? Second. Matthew, take roll. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. The following is a resolution decision of the Planning Board of the Village of Tucko, New York. Applicant Verizon Global Real Estate is seeking to improve its property at 225 Marbledale Road in Tucko. The property is currently in disrepair and is prone to severe flooding. The applicant proposes to improve the underground uh, drainage, pave the parking lot, replace the on-site sidewalks, and replace the existing uh, retaining walls. This board has referred this application to the village engineers, and all engineers have no objections as to the proposed plans. We find that, we find based on the work session and presentations at the public hearing that the applicant has met its burden as to the 7-1 of the village of Tuckahoe zoning code, and therefore the application is approved with the following condition based on the feedback from Westchester County. One, prior to a permit being issued, the applicant must provide a stormwater system maintenance program that is uh, approved by the building inspector. Every representation of the applicant made in its application and presentation will be a condition of disapproval. Any deviation from the representations made shall be a cause for the rev revocation of said approval. June 18, 2024. Can I have a second, please? Second. Nancy, take roll. In favor. In favor. In favor. In favor. All right, guys, con good luck. Let's get this thing done. All right. All right. Have a great night. All right. So next is uh, 170 Marbledale. Mr. Barbier, how are you, sir? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. David Barbuti, architect, uh, representing uh, automotive upholstery uh, for a site plan amendment for the concrete retaining wall in the rear yard at 170 Marbledale Avenue. Um, we're here tonight. Basically, we had got approval, I believe it was three years ago. Yeah, roughly. Uh, for the wall. Um, we went back a few times because there were some hiccups along the way. Uh, finally, the wall is up. Uh, there were four uh, minor modifications, really. Uh, so based on a retaining wall survey prepared by CNOR surveys, surveyors, uh, after the wall was constructed, it got moved a little bit slightly off to where it originally was. Um, that's indicated on a dotted line on the site plan. Um, the contractor who's presently working on the job uh, as a cost-saving expense, instead of doing the riprap on the slope, He's proposing a four to six inch stone uh, set and compacted into the slope to, as a s slope stabilization. Uh, it's presently there. I have pictures of that if you'd like to see. Um, and the height of the wall on the south end of the wall was lowered approximately five feet due to the modification of the wall location. Actually got pushed closer to the street. Um, so it gave us a little bit more room to slope the hillside. Uh, and lastly, um, which is the big one. Originally, it was approved with the stone veneer. Um, it's basically, it's an exorbitant amount of money um, from what my client was originally told in the beginning by his first contractor. So it's basically a monetary issue at this point. So to face the wall that was originally approved would be around $175,000 and it's just, 
it's really not cost effective. Um, we've come up with a couple of schemes. I think, I'm not sure if you received an email today, um, but I've got some uh, renderings done um, using different stucco materials, stucco patterns, trying to make it look like a block. Um, also scored pattern to make it look similar to the building next door. So tried a couple of variations. Okay. Uh, I have several questions, uh, specifically about the height of the wall. Uh, and it, it seems to me that it's uh, taller than the original design of the wall. I just, because uh, I have the old drawings, right? And I guess the southern part closest to the new building, right? Uh, I, I think in your original, I think the, in your original design, the tallest wall think was 19.6. It just, it just feels like the walls got bigger. Actually, I, think, I believe they got smaller. Um, well, okay, on your new plan here, you have it at 21 feet. On your old plan, you have it at 19, I'm sorry, on the new plan, yeah, uh, the wall is 21 feet. On the old set, it's 19.6, so I read it. The sections aren't coordinated, so I, I can't tell exactly where it was. Oh, no, they are coordinated. Sorry. Seven. So at the north side, the exposed wall height was 10 feet on your roof. No, I'm, I'm referring to the one closest to the, 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 the new building, right? So basically at this location here, Mr. Bogdan? Oh, next to the right here. storage building. Yeah, right. So right here. One second. Let me look at. It was. You have it at 21, I'm assuming it's 26. Yeah. No, we got to look at the, this number here. Yeah. And the other one was 19.6. Uh, uh, Let me just double check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 19.6. Okay. Uh, I and the interesting part is you moved the wall closer to us, right? So in other words, you, you ran into some issues. Came out of the slope, right? Right. So you moved the wall closer to the street, and the walls got lower. So I'm a little bit confused as to why. I believe so. The wall heights haven't changed. So we came back a year and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, there was an issue with the first contractor. We came back. We did the north end of the wall and we got permission to do just the north end of the wall mm -hmm. at the steep slope. Right. Then a plan was submitted uh, and we received the approval from the building department to move forward with the south end of the wall. It's always been 20 feet. What, what, again, what I don't understand, again, forgive me, is that the original wall was, you know, maybe about, that's what this dimension. Uh, so if you look at the, the depth from your property line, right? You have this is approximately, I'm guessing at this point, right? So this is here, right? Now you're here. So you're pulling this forward. So the wall should have dropped because there's a slope. That's not the latest point. That's not the latest at this point. I have, this is my set that I received in 2022. This is from me. I, I mean, I'd have to go back and look. Has this been through a number of iterations? But I believe, this, wasn't this the one that was approved? Okay. So I know this wall over here. Yeah. At one point was 26 or 27 feet. Okay. We brought it forward. It was at 20 feet. I mean, I have everything logged and dated. I could forward you. The yeah, I feel, I'd yeah. like to see that because at this point, I mean, I, I just again don't understand why it should have it should have been uh, the wall should have reduced in size, not remain the same. This may have been the very first approval. Yeah, it goes back because I had another one and it has the same dates on it. So can you just check? Yeah, uh, no problem. Yeah, because yeah, I, like I said, I think it was originally it was 26 to 27 feet. And right. And then we pulled it forward and it came down to 20 feet. And it was pretty much consistent, 2018. <laughs> and then towards the north end, it was somewhere around between 11 and 14 feet. Again, the, um, looking at the sections you provided us, right? Um, and uh, uh, yeah, this one should have been 17. All right, so I'd, I'd like to see the progression of, of the drawings you submitted to the, build, sure. to the building department and, and, and understand what happened with this wall because it, it's, it should have 
because you move the wall forward, it should have actually been lower, not not uh, uh, at that elevation. So I'm a little concerned about that because it's a it's a large wall. All right. So let's just stay. So I, I'd like to see that. And and the second thing is uh, I'd like to uh, talk about the uh, um, the treatment of that wall. Okay. Um, you want to show us your proposals sure. so that we can review? <laughs> Do you have a photograph of what the existing wall currently looks like? Uh, For people at home? Now just put, can you clip it on your board so we can all see? Sure. Yeah. Right yeah. Grab the microphone. Right. So right now it's bare concrete wall, exposed concrete. Right. Um, as I indicated, the original intent, you know, I was looking, trying to figure out what to do, some sort of a pattern, a scoring pattern. I looked at the adjacent building. I says, you know, maybe let's look at it that way and just do like a stacked look. Wasn't really too happy with that. So we did another one where it's basically similar size block. I actually, you know, playing around with the proportions, but where it looks actually like a stack larger old masonry wall. But right. So w when I first saw those, my my uh, first uh, uh, concern was that I mean, I, I walked by um, uh, your facility and I saw I've been I've been watching the wall, uh, and it's just a, a very massive wall, uh, and it's currently like a, a gray because it's just natural concrete. Uh, your your proposal is to apply uh, uh, stucco. Uh, on this product, which is looks like a lighter color closer to the uh, adjacent building, uh, I'm just concerned that it's just going to become another massive wall. I mean, if you look at the f uh, upper left photograph, I mean, it's it's a, it's a massive wall. Um, and again, I still don't understand. <laughs> I still don't understand why it had to be be that tall. I mean, I'm looking. Can you can I, can you can I show you something for a second? Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm gonna. This is the photograph. Again, I don't I don't understand why it has to be. They had to be that that tall. It could have been lowered to you know to uh, you know to well, give so you a better. Not, they're not finished with the grading up on the top. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, all right. So so again, uh, the concern I have it's a large wall. Uh, I'm not sure it needed to be that tall. Um, uh, but the concern that I personally have is it's just a a big block of wall, and you, uh, we need to figure out a way to kind of break the massing up. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure if you do with color, texture, or, but right now that wall is just an eyesore, to be totally frank with you, in my opinion. Um, you know, I know you've tried some, some, you know, decorative treatments to it, but I don't, I'm not sure you're, you're solving the real issue, which is it's just a big wall. You know, I don't know if you need to add trees in front of it. Uh, so, so if you see one of them, I, and I just am basically to scale. I mean, we're trying to do some landscaping in front along this side. Those are eight feet. I know, and your, and your wall is 20 feet, right. so it doesn't, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's, so we need to figure out a way to kind of, how do we break up the massing so it doesn't look so massive, um, my personal opinion. All right. I'm not sure if anyone else on the board has any other concerns, or, or maybe I'm overblown making this a big deal, but uh, have any questions, any uh, thoughts on this proposal? That was my immediate thought because we received these this afternoon. Right. Right. So uh, I'd like you to, to look at that and try to figure out a way how we, how we can bring the scale of the wall down. In your other uh, submittals, you had uh, uh, the fence stepping back into the, uh, uh, into the hill. Uh, this proposal shows that the fence is sitting on top of the wall. You know, I'm not sure, for example, if you put, move the fence back, do some pla planting along the top of the wall, the kind of bees or, again, I'm trying to, uh, you, got, you got to look at ways to kind of bring this down. All right. And then uh, what's happening with the stormwater management system? Is that going in? So that, so it's twofold. We were at the work session, you know, we had a conversation with Mr. Williams, uh, Mr. Wolfson. Uh, we're waiting for the contractor to do the work. We're kind of at, he doesn't want to start work until he gets an okay that he could leave the four to six inch stone on the top instead of doing a rip wrap because presently as it is uh, over here, 
yeah. that amount of dirt, which I know. he's using as a basically a lift where he can get his machine up there, put the, the residual or the rest of the gravel up on the top, and finalize the top. That mound then gets pushed to the north end, and we continue with doing the work in the parking lot. Yeah, the problem with all that stone up there, just again, <laughs> visually, it just brings your wall up even further. You know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, again, I'm looking at the photograph I took while I, I walk at night, and it just makes it taller. I don't know if you guys want to see it, but. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I have reservations about that. So um, I think we need, to, we need to take some time and, and figure out what to do here, uh, you know, to do it correctly. Okay. All right. Um, and then the other thing is r right now your, your yard is, uh, you got a lot of stuff going on there. I mean, cars, it's unfinished, it's uh, trailers, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit of an eyesore right now. I know there's a lot of things in motion, but... You know, I'm not sure how you're going to put your, your, your uh, drainage system in when you have all that stuff lying around. So the trailers, I know he's emptying out. He's got to get rid of the trailers. Uh, he's putting them in a car trailer at this point so that can be, you know, moved around. What does that mean? It's a car trailer. You know, it's a trailer where you put cars in. Yeah. So instead of having those boxes there, he's going to put in a trailer, and he's going to take it off the site. Okay. okay. You're taking the stuff off the site. Look. Right. Okay. Um, it's an operating business. Oh, I get Even that. before this, the parking lot was full of cars. Yeah, no question. I understand. So yeah. it's you know it's kind of hard. He's got to you know jockey cars around. It looks like a mess because I got a contractor that doesn't want to move forward to get the top done because you know. Yeah. So we've got a lot of things that are. I understand. Butting heads. Right. So I, I think you know we'll try to help you, but you know we need to come up with some solutions to kind of uh, overcome some of these issues. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know exactly what your property looked like. I understood that. And you, and you chose to put the wall up. You know, it, uh, this, yeah, you had a lot of greenery. I, I get that part. You had the trees. You took all the trees out, and you made that into a 20-foot retaining wall. Well, you know, I've, I've had people that come by in town, and they Speak, said speak it to the microphone. I'm sorry. I've had people come by and look at the property, but I guess you walk by, and you say it's an eyesore. There are people say it looks so much better, property looks bigger. And I, I don't understand why it's, it's, I think with the, the way the pictures are shown, it's going to look good. Uh, it looks better than, to me than I just showed you a picture of all trees down there. And uh, I, I don't know. I just, I think it looks better. But that, that's, again, that's, uh, that's, I mean, does that's debatable. Look at it. They, if they didn't see the green, all weeds growing there. Does that look bad to what it looks like now? Can we ask anybody else? Or? Yeah, sure, by all means. Yeah. But what, I, what I'm saying is, um, you know, you took away the greenery, right, and you put up this massive 20-foot wall. I understand why you did it. You want to increase your parking lot. You want, I, I get that part, right? Uh, but it's, to me, it's not that big retaining wall. Uh, it's just massive. I mean, it's, uh, uh, it, it's a massive wall, you know. And, and we could have, you know, potentially done a different solution where you could have, I think at one point there was a discussion about stepping it back, you know, doing a terracing so that, you know, you kind of uh, uh, alleviated, you know, the, the visual uh, size of that wall. Uh, but I'm not sure what happened to that. I mean, the original plan was, the whole thing came about was, was going to be the wall, mm -hmm. and then there was going to go a building because I have to do it in steps. I can't right. just throw a building up and retaining wall I don't have the funds for that but right. so I thought the wall would st start the process and then we put a building in front of it it would be hidden away but now that's I, great I can't but do the, it because right. it's the problem now now we have a large wall where you can build potentially two or three story uh, uh, you know building there but you know you're not going to do that potentially for another you know, who knows five years ten years two years I, I don't know that but we, we're going to be living with this wall until you do that you know so uh, and, that, and that's uh, so at this point, I'd like to find a way to kind of, you know, uh, soften that mass. So if, if they, you know, how the, the building has the, the two-tone on there, can we put, like, 
like columns or, you know, to separate the... Um, no, I get it, and that's what we're looking for. If it, okay. I, I, what I'd like you to do is on our next work workshop, you know, come up and come up with some solutions that we can all review, you know, and hopefully we come up with something that we're all happy with, or you know, uh, or happy as a short-term solution. So that when you decide to fully develop your site, yeah, you know, it's, it's a moot point. I mean, better is subjective, right? So someone might walk by and say, "Oh, this looks better," but that doesn't necessarily mean it looks good. So what I would say. The picture on the bottom left where it has some color to it and you have some greenery in front of it, I think that would be an improvement upon what it currently looks like. Because um, the thing is... There are two proposals there. It's just... Yeah, the only difference is the way, it's the, way the brick is, uh, uh, you know, it's either stacked or, uh, or uh, stacked or staggered. I mean, if I, if I recall correctly, right? Those are, there's two options. It's, all, it's basically the same. It's, it's, either, it's either the joints are vertical or just like a brick stack. But I mean, it, for 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 uh, purposes of like, obviously, it's what you guys are gonna like. Is so if I suggest putting color in the middle of it to break it up, like the that might be a, that might be a solution. Yeah, that I mean, it could be as simple as you know. Go and do that, and you don't like. I don't. Is that something I, I, that would be? A again, I, I don't know. I'm asking you guys to, to come up with a solution. You know, uh, hopefully we can massage it to, to something. Uh, but you know, I'm not sure how your neighbor's going to feel if you take his colors and just bring them across. You know, so maybe you should have a discussion with your neighbor about that. Um, but again, just something you know uh, to break up that large mass. Again, it could be paint, it could be a, 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 a whatever, I mean, yeah. Yeah, increasing the size of the trees might take away from the height of the, the wall, at, at least the perception of yeah, it. Vitees get 10, they're 10 feet when you get them, they're 10 feet high, that's, that's uh, half the wall. Yeah, I, my Aborite is over 20 feet now, but it took 10 years, but. <laughs> Again, I, I think you have options. I'd like you to explore those options. Come back to us. You know, hopefully, maybe some of us can come up with some, you know, a, a thought, you know, that we could share with you at the work session. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, I, I, I'd like to resolve. I'll, so, I'll make the wall softer. And right now, it's just. Antonio, real fast. So, if are you guys okay with the top of the wall? Because it, let's say, because that's really the only reason why I bring this up no, is I because. Know. He can continue to do his construction. We're a dead stall there. I know. Is there any way you can soften that up? I mean, why is it, does it have to be stone up there? Can you? Can you, because again, all all you're doing at this point is just extending your wall up visually. Get get into your. Sorry. Start again. So I've got a 30 degree slope. In some spots, a little bit steeper. So once I put veget, you know, uh, dirt on top of that, now I've got to somehow stabilize that. Isn't there dirt underneath the uh, uh, the current? Uh, so basically, wrap? what happened was all that got dug out between this contractor and the previous contractor took a lot of the soil away from the site. Oh, that's all gravel from the bottom of the wall up, five or eight feet back. That's that's all, all gravel. gravel. So there's no soil. I mean, that's you know. So the whole idea of the gravel is whatever hits that comes down, goes into the into the dry wells. Yeah. That that was the whole thing because I didn't want any hydrostatic pressure behind the wall. What about matting? Yeah. What did they? So what they what they did basically is is kind of if I recall correct, it's like a four by four mesh and it's basically a seeded mesh and they're just gonna lay it on a floor, tie it down, and it's gonna grow. Uh, um, they put grass seed in. Grass. So essentially, it grows like an ivy wall or something. So on. So you're talking on the wall or on a slope? On a slope. On a slope. Okay. So basically, I, f I, f I forgot what so it's, it's called. It's kind of like a jute netting. Yeah. Possibly. Really. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, I mean, you put your stone, but then you know, maybe just put something so that it'll grow. You know, it doesn't require a lot of dirt. But actually, they have dirt, so that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, you always so in order to have. Yeah, the thing, nothing's gonna grow up there with, with gravel. No, nah, nothing's nah. gonna grow up there with gravel. But then, what's gonna happen with the fence that's up there? So I need the fence there as protection. So when the neighbors... right, but is it gonna be on top of the wall? Is it gonna yeah. be behind so it? Because that's the rendering is kind of off. Because when I told my guy I wanted it at the property line, because that's the original intention, because right. I don't want the neighbors on the property. Yep. Um, 
Because right now it's sitting on a wall you're showing. No, no, I know. And, and you know what? It, it's, it's, I've been kicking this back and forth, and I just got the guy, and he just said, I don't understand what I'm looking for for some reason. I don't, All right, whatever. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, but that'll get fixed by next meeting. You know, the fence is technically supposed to be on the property line. So. I think if it was, like, behind the wall, it would probably not give it so much I mean, I'll light. look into it. I'll, you know, I'll be more than happy. I'll play around with it, come up with some solutions. We'll have a chat at the work session, and we'll go from there. Okay. Concern is for the applicant is to move the project at least forward so he can get rid of the dirt. So keep, no, uh, if we don't, I, you know, I'm not just explaining to you no, what no, the I, problem is now. No, is I, this construction will be at a halt until August. Then I, I understand that. And, and the last time, two years ago, you know, we we had an emergency kind of uh, call saying that we had to put up the wall on on the uh, northern side because uh, we're concerned about the winter. It's going to slide down. You know, so we gave you the approval, you know, and then we went through the whole entire winter and no wall went up, you know. So I'm a little hesitant, you know, you, I've been burnt once, you know, so I'm not a little shy right now. So, uh, uh, um, you know, I understand you want to finish this, but at this point, you know, we have an issue and I want to resolve it. So uh, I understand. Just yeah. to let you know, though, the first, the, the, the reason why we had a problem in the beginning was it was a different contractor. That I, I understand your history. I know what you guys went through. I, I, I clearly understand that. But we you know, have a competent guy now. So. Yep. That wants to move. Well, forward. listen, if you if you can find a solution in the next day or so, send it to the building department. They'll email it to us. And if we, you know, if we think it's appropriate, you know, we'll, we'll, I mean, that's the best I could do at this point. No, I get it. Okay. That's fine. And in the meantime, I'll get you the progression of. Yes, please. Drawings. Okay. Uh, any other questions from the board? Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. We'll see you at the work session. All right. So uh, since we have no other business, I make a motion to to uh, uh, close this uh, hearing. Have a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, Tucker.